All right, let's go now, guys. We're doing Snap Vine Bridge campaign mode. For our hero, we have a level 7 hero, 3 into Swordsman, 2 into Spiked Armor, 2 into Toughness, 1 into Flurry, and 3 into Sand Warriors. For our upgrades, we have 5 points into Archery, 1 point into Barracks, 3 into Mage, 4 into Hellfire, and 4 into Reinforcements. And so starting things off, we have the Buccaneers. At the bottom, we get one of those Scum Bars. You gotta be very careful that we do not put them in range of those Snap Vines. This is the reason why it's called Snap Vine. Because they, these things will pluck and eat your guys. They will eat your reinforcements and barracks and, of course, mercenaries, which is super frustrating if you paid 150 gold and only to have them eaten by one of those things. Just, ugh. Anyway, we're going to put archers on the front, on the top, and bottom lane. Have three buccaneers ready to go, and then a level three archer tower over on the left hand towards the wall, towards the center, really, towards the back. And we also have a barracks in between. That little will create a little choke point there. Not too bad of a level. We do get, we meet some new uh, tribal warriors. Uh, we get the, in a little bit, we get some poison guys. And, well, you'll see the most, my, um, the ones I hate the most. You'll see that in a few waves. So stay tuned for that. Our hero's going to be at the top there doing some damage. These savage hunters, these are the poison dudes. So we, they're similar to the archer guys we saw in the desert. These are effectively anti-infantry, anti-barracks. They poison your guys. They are fairly squishy, though, so that level 3 archer tower is going to be able to take them out fairly easily. But you do have to be very careful not to leave your buccaneers or your heroes standing in range of the poison too long, or they will die very quickly. So Something to keep an eye on. The game definitely keeps you under toes with those things. Otherwise, it's just the usual put archer towers down and kill them all off. And so far, it's been pretty, pretty smooth sailing already to wave 4. We have level 2 archer towers and we are starting to put a mage tower right next to that buccaneer den towards the bottom. That's going to be important later on. On the roundabout towards the back on the left-hand side, we will put a artillery tower. That's going to be that's also going to do a ton of damage once it gets fully leveled up. Level 3 archer tower coming out on the bottom. We're just cruising our way. We're making our way into wave 5. These guys are almost done. We'll call the wave in early. Got 19 bonus gold there. Plenty of wasps coming in. So this is one of the reasons we need archer towers. It's kind of a balance. Um, there are some. There's a few enemies coming that are not going to just die quickly to archers, but for the most part, archers will do you for this early part of the wave. We have a level four archer tower in the back. Earth shamans. These things are similar to the healers. They basically give the enemies give your well, yeah, give the enemies a little bit of bonus resistance to you. Probably one of the most annoying guys, and then the other guys that'll come later, I'll show you those guys in a second. They drop a nice rain of fire there. You can get plenty of scorched earth damage. Very, very good. Hero is just chilling out on the top, and we're just periodically upgrading these archer towers as we see fit. We have level 3 level 3s and 1 level 4. Also a level 2 there at the top, and we're going to throw in some mage towers. I would have at least 3 mage towers up by level 7, because we will be definitely needing those. The Earth Warrior guys, you can see little green ores around them. It gives them bonus armor, so having some mage towers is going to be very helpful here. And thankfully our Alaric, though, he's very tanky, so he's able to stall at these Earth Shaman guys. We're trying to get a huge clump, really nice rain of fire there, killed everything. And it's going to get us through wave 7 pretty easily there. You just keep pay attention to these snap vines, though. Like I said, we're not really putting any barracks towards the top because they will get gobbled up if we try to do that. Poison guys coming on the top. Got to watch out that area there. That's one of the reasons why we have that level 4 archer tower so early into the waves. Buccaneers have to be very careful on the bottom, too, so that they don't die to the poison. So far, they've been okay, though. Our hero, we're going to have to have him run back. He's getting a little bit low there. Hope he doesn't die. And ooh, he just gets out very, very close there. Almost dead. That would be very annoying if he were to die. Um, level 4 artillery tower on this roundabout is going to be extremely important. And here are probably some of the most annoying guys. These blue tribal guys, they uh, magic resist Aurora. So we have the green guys, which are increase the armor, and then the blue guys, which give the magic resist. So we can't rely on our mages when we have the green guys. If they get mixed together, they're just really, really tough to beat. So try to stall them out and isolate them as best you can. If it was just the green guys, we'd probably just spam mages, but we can't with the blue guys there. Now, we also have these cool tribal totem things, and they're kind of... they're. Actually, I really like the, the Tridal Totem Towers. They're very fun towers, but they're also very situational towers. Like, you can't just spam them like you can with the normal Archer Towers and get that DPS out there. You sacrifice DPS with the Tribal Totems in exchange for a specialty tower that essentially silences your enemies and increases their weaknesses. So they won't carry the game for you, but sometimes in these little choke points, you can set up a 
tribal tower and it is very effective. So we seem we did all right here with the tribal totem on the bottom. And then I think the level four artillery is going to be absolutely essential. See, we've already put a point into scorched earth. And once these tribal warriors really start to pick up, it's going to be important that we have that scorched earth. It's going to do a ton of damage. In the bottom here, more earth warriors. You can see the tribal totem kicking in here, doing increasing their damage they take. And the buccaneers are just standing back, chucking their Molotov cocktails. Very helpful. As long as they don't die, that's their, their DPS is great. We have a wizard's tower now. We have 11. These things are going to be very useful, so just keep in mind this is a very important choke point with the Lizard Tower, the Buccaneer Den, and the Tribal Totem area. And then the top, of course, with the level 4 artillery. Good mixture, you can see the blue shaman and the green shaman combining their power together, creating both resistances. We're trying to use our Alaric here to stall them out. If we can keep one of them busy, he will no longer be able to buff his allies. So seems to have worked there. Both guys died. War wasps are just kind of a pushover. The wave kind of gives you these intermediate waves in between the the bigger waves. It's kind of like if you have the DPS, you just get a free wave, essentially. When you see that little flying icon, it's usually a good indication that it's going to be a pretty easy wave. It's kind of like padding, almost. It's the way of stretching the game out a little bit. I mean, it's not bad. It gives you gold to get to the next wave. I just do feel like these waves are pretty easy. I've never really lost to a wave like this. Never even. It's very rare that you get a guy to slip through, unless you're just doing some kind of strange strategy where you have, like, no DPS. Gorillas. Gorillan, whatever <laughs> Whatever they're called. These things are the King Kongs. They are very tanky. Um, they also have a lot of HP regen. So you need the DPS to keep their health, start chunking their health down, but you really need the magic as well. So make sure you are constantly attacking these things. Otherwise, if you do a little bit of damage and they walk down your lane, they will heal back up most of the time. So you have to constantly be dealing damage to these things. Over at the top, you can see the Swartz Earth is doing so much damage in the artillery tower. I love these artillery towers when they're placed correctly. At the bottom, we are trying to tank with our hero, and we can't get him too close. Though, otherwise, he will. You know, these gorillas—they do pretty good damage, so our hero won't last too long if he stands against the the gorillas. But he can stall him out for a little bit. Reinforcements are a really good drop if you can find a key area. Now, notice the tribal tower on the top as well. So we converted one of those archer towers into a tribal tower, and that's going to be another key ch choke point. We have two level three mages at the top with the tribal totem and the artillery. This is a very strong choke point. If they manage to get past that, we have a barracks there, which we're not really upgrading too much, but yeah, we're just keeping it there. Be careful with your buccaneers, like I said. Um, if you get them too close to the snap lines, they will die. If you get them, if they get too caught up in the melee, they start to resort to their melee attacks, and they just they don't tend to last very long because they're very squishy. So to get your get the most out of your buccaneers, just pay attention to them throughout the game. Um, at the bottom, we also have another level four mage tower. Whenever you have the money, I recommend you do that, especially dealing with these shamans who can buff their guys. Nice rain of fire there at the bottom, clearing out a lot of stuff. And this is the 15th wave, so we were clearing out the rest of the King Kongs. At the top, we have points into the drill as well. I maxed that out, and you'll see that's going to be very important in a second as the wave ends here. One shot, one shot. Yeah, there we go. Boom. <laughs> He's dead. Splats. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good one.